Hi guys, thank you for your support and welcome back. Today we will be learning the poem Preludes by T.S. Eliot. Now let's see some facts about the poet. T.S. Eliot, also known as Thomas Turns Eliot, he was born on 26 September 1888 and he died on 4th January 1965. He was an essayist, he was a publisher, playwright, poet, social and literary critic. Now, one interesting fact about the poet is that the poet previously used to work as a teacher and he also works in a bank but he quit all those jobs and later on he worked as a director in a publishing house and he becomes a publisher in uh, a publishing house called Faber and Faber. He was born into a distinguished family, Boston Brahmin family in Missouri. T.S. Eliot do not simply come from a common family. He comes from a very distinguished family. When I say distinguished family, I mean that they were the members of Boston traditional all upper class, upper class people in Missouri, in Boston. And he attended Harvard University. He was born and brought up in US, but he moved to UK in 1914 which means that his childhood was spent in U.S., but when he attained the age of 25, he moved to U.K. Then in the year 1948, this is very important, T.S. Eliot was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature, and T.S. Eliot is considered as one of the most important modernist poet. Now let's recite the poem together. Preludes by T.S. Eliot. The winter evening settles down with smell of sticks in passageways, six o'clock. The burn out ends of smoky days and now a gusty shower wraps the dreamy scraps of withered leaves about your feet and newspapers from vacant lots. The showers beat on broken blinds and chimney pots and at the corner of the streets a lonely cab horse steams and stands and then the lighting of the lamps. The morning comes to consciousness of faint, stale smells of beer from the sawdust trampled street with all its muddy feet that press to early coffee stands with the other masquerades that time resumes. One thinks of all the hands that are raising dingy shacks in a thousand furnished rooms. Let's see some points regarding about the poem. The title, Preludes, what does it mean? It means that something that comes before more important event or action that introduces or prepares for it. This is a definition given by Cambridge English Dictionary. However, in our context, we can take this prelude on the meaning on two levels. First, it might mean that this is just the prelude's poems are just an introduction to Eliot's poems, uh, or on the second level, we might it he we might take it as this is just an introduction to modern urban society which are already decayed and which are already ruined and which will be uh, which we will be learning in the poem. And this preludes is a series of four short poems published in his first collection, Proof Rock and Other Observations, in 1917. The original preludes contain four short poems. However, the syllabus which is prescribed by Manipur Board for Class 10, here we have only two poems, only two sections are extracted. Anyway, prelude is about the drudgery, waste, and isolation of modern urban life. This poem is about like um, giving us a picture of how dirty, how desolate, how isolated, how alienated the life of city is. And the setting of the poem, the poem is set in a modern city and the name of the modern city is not given so it is an unspecified modern city and this poem is written in free verse. There are some literary devices which are used in the poem. So we'll see them one by one. First personification. Um, for those who are who have watched my previous video, you will under, you will still remember it. But for those who haven't watched yet, I will repeat for you. Personification is uh, like giving human qualities to those inanimate objects or 
treating abstract ideas as a human being. So here, the winter evening settled down. Winter is personified. Then alliteration. Alliteration is like the repetition of consonant sound. So we'll see an example. Settles down with smell of sticks and passes away six o'clock. Here, you, when I read these lines, you will notice that there is a repeated, uh, repeated sound of S. And this is called alliteration. Broken blinds. The uh, Baba sound are re re repeated. Like broken. B. B. And stale smells. So this is alliteration. Imagery. The poet gives us lots of images which we can see with our eyes, like grimy scraps, broken blinds, sawdust, trampled street, dingy sheds. Then we have metaphor. Metaphor are those uh, comparison of two unlike objects, and one word will replace replaces the another and uh, replaces another word. Here, the burnout ends of smoky days is a metaphor for end of day. Masquerade is a metaphor for those city people who lead a very pretentious life just like wearing a mask hyperbole when we say hyperbole it means that an, an exaggeration statement not to be taken literally so here in the point we have in a thousand furnished room the point is uh, uh, trying to say that there are many rented rooms it may be like in reality it might be like 200 300 rooms we never know but here the, we can clearly know that the poet is exaggerating by saying thousand and symbol newspaper here is treated as symbol symbol for what symbol for those the circle of life that the village and uh, the city people li leave like it's the same every day morning will come then afternoon then evening then night and the next day they will do the same thing so newspaper is a symbol for that then we have themes of isolation, dissection, desolation, and dreary urban landscape. The theme of isolation, like lo there is loneliness in tone, and people isolate from one another. Then dissection, there is sadness, desolation, uh, their life is empty, their life is very bleak. Then dreary urban landscape, uh, uh, here the theme of like, People who are in, in the city, they are depressingly dull and they, their life is depressingly repetitive. Coming to the first stanza. Now, before explaining, I would like to keep, uh, I would like to tell you something that you should keep in your mind. These city dwellers, they lead a very fatigued, boring life and they are very depressed and uh, they lead a very meaningless life and they their society is very exhausted okay the speaker begins by telling us that it was winter evening and uh, the winter evening is approaching to that particular city and there is a smell of stick smell of meat in the passageway on the road and it was six o'clock which hints that it was dinner time and uh, it was roughly dinner time so the smell of stick is wafting in the air and we can see that here the time is six o'clock and it was winter the burnout ends of smoky days here the end of the day is marked or the end of the day is indicated by or is compared to uh, burnout butts of cigarette because here it is showing the lack of energy or let's say the night is marked by those uh, butts of cigarettes and now a gusty shower wraps suddenly to add to the misery in the life of those city people it's very the, the, the city is very dirty the road is dirty and there were lots of smells and not only that to add to their misery there was sudden uh, how do I say there was um, sudden blowing of wind and rain there was rain and on the road we will be able to see that the grimy scraps or withered leaf about your feet and newspapers from back and lots i told you the road of that city was very dirty there were like uh, scattered pieces of uh, dirty things and dried leaves dried leaf because it was early winter and autumn has just ended not only that the newspapers 
from those empty spaces, from those roads were scattered here and there. Now we can imagine how dirty is the city and uh, how the life of the people must have been. The showers beat on broken blinds and chimney pots. The showers, the rain, the rain falls on those broken blinds. The blinds uh, which are put on, on the window as a coverings, they were broken. And the rain falls on these chimney pots too, which means that the poet is trying to give us a picture, a picture of a ruined city. This, though it was a city, even the blinds were broken. And at the corner of the street, a lonely cap for steams and stamps. And at the corner of the street, street there was a cab horse. And this cab horse seems very lonely. And, and the horse is steaming and stamping, which means that it was a cold night. On a winter cold night, uh, you know, horse used to breathe steam. We can see the steam coming out from their noses. So it was a very cold night and it, the horse was very uncomfy. And, and the horse was very impatient so he was stamping his feet and then the lighting of the lamp so the first section of the poem, poem ends with the lighting of the lamp meaning night time was already there evening has been and evening has ended and night time has started so the lamp on the street were light were lit i mean Coming to the second stanza. The morning comes to consciousness of pan, stale smells of beer from the sodas trampled street with all its muddy feet that press to early coffee stands. Here what we can see is that normally, usually, generally, morning is marked by freshness. However, in this particular city, morning, nothing fresh was there. Here, when the people awaken from their sleep, uh, sleep from uh, last night, what they have be, they have been doing or their activities from last night, they were in a bar or they were drinking lots of beer. So when they wake up early in the morning, their mouth smells of stale beer. The, it's not fresh, right? It's uh, it it looks very dull. From the soda trampled street with all its muddy feet that press to early coffee stands. So these people, countless people, let's say, they wake up from their sleep and they are about to go to their normal, normal daily life. Uh, uh, children going to school, uh, adult going to office. As it was raining last night, the next day the road was muddy. And this road, uh, uh, as it was muddy, soda has been poured above it so that the muddiness would be quite tolerable so they 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 tramped on this uh, they walked through this muddy feet to get what to to get coffee morning coffee then this uh, these people they were wearing masks not literally wearing which means that the poet is trying to trying to tell us that these people are living a very pretentious life. What they have been doing last night, now they are pretending as if they were a new person, as if nothing had happened, and they are going on about their daily life. The time resumes. They are going on about uh, their daily activities. One thinks of all the hands that are raising dingy sheds in a thousand furnace room. Just like the poet, the poet says that countless people, many people are living in a rented house and they are raising their blinds, they are opening their windows and they are stretching their arms to mark the, the beginning of the day in a thousand furnished rooms. In many rooms, just like the poet, people are awakened in the morning. No matter how much they try to act very active, they are not active, they are very dull, they are very depressed, and the, they, they lead a very pretentious life. So this is about modern life or city life uh, presented by T.S. Eliot, uh, trying to let us picture how dirty it is and how alienated, isolated, how depressing it is. I hope you understand. Now coming to the question, what season of the year is suggested in the first stanza? What season did I tell you? It was winter, right? 
okay number two what is the evening compared to the evening is compared to what the evening is compared to secret but smoke filled with unhealthy things what surrounds the feet of the passerby those dirty withered leaves those scraps those newspaper when do the showers beat the showers beat in the evening what does the cat horse do the cat horse uh, breeds teams and the cat horse stamps its feet as it was impatient and it was feeling uncomfortable in the cold night what smell fills the morning air stale beer drinks that had been uh, i mean like that that the people had drank the night before how are the feet of the men going to the coffee stands their feet were filled with mud dirt and sawdust okay guys i hope you understand and uh, i wish you have a nice week ahead anyway thank you bye bye